wait, what's? Oh, that's my singing. Oh wait, it's way too loud. Sorry, folks. Yep, I'm going to the notes because this is to catch up for last week, which is pretty good. Uh, let's see here. That was NXT, so that I just saw. So yeah, that was raw. Is that raw? Yeah, that's the 4th of July. That was SmackDown. Wow. I'm finally, uh, now I know where I'm at. Hello, folks. Welcome back. Excuse me while I go through my notes. We're on the one. I am the only Hobo Tom. As I told you, there's going to be a, a minor programming change. That's how I can figure stuff out. And normally a lot of that depends on me. Which is not good. Well, as you can see, this one shoulder, it's almost... Back online to where the other one is, I think. So, yeah, it's a little saggy. That might be the seat angle, though. I'm, I can't tell. But I'll tell you what, I have about 80% now range of motion in this shoulder, which is 60% more than what I had last week. I don't know if I strained. I have to ask my friend if I strained it, pinched a nerve, or did something. I know I didn't, I didn't tear it. Because that would have left a bruise. Straining, I could understand because I think I went, I think that the day before I went fishing, went to the gym, did some yard work, collected my aluminum. And then literally the next day, it's just like, well, and of course I carried everything. Like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it get tough. I'm going to carry it. I'm going to carry stuff with us on. Mainly heavy bags of groceries. And then Friday, my, Friday night, my arm said F you. Saturday, my arm said F you. Sunday, my arm said F you. I think it wasn't until the middle of this week where I kind of felt quasi comfortable to take a nap on it. I don't know, one day I napped like fully in side fetal position. Most preferred single person sleeping position besides like face and pillows drooling away and of course when there's another person there you can always just drool on her amazing belly <laughs> you thought I was going to say something else um, and of course spooning spooning is always good spooning leads to other things hopefully enough about Wait, you don't need to know about my private intimacies. Um, so the good news is, today's show is going to be all the non-WWE wrestling. Tomorrow, I'll be doing my Money in the Bank recap and all the thank yous. Because I have a... I just figured I have too many thank yous, I'll just do them all at once. And then I'll start. So I'll only be a little bit behind. Get some news and notes. Um, and program other programming issues at the end of the show. So let's talk about AEW. So we start off with Orange Cassidy versus All Ego, Ethan Page. Ethan Page is so good. The best friends, there's some shenanigans. Referee said, I don't care. Best friends, get the hell out of here. Bunch of losers anyway. Um, Orange Cassidy. It's pretty cool. It was... um. Arm drag. He has a good series of moves. Arm drag. Something else. Crossbody. That was good. Ethan Page is so good, though. Big shoulder tackle. Um, the stretch on Orange Cassidy. Stuck his hands in his pockets. Stuck his hands in his pockets. That delayed vertical suplex. Ethan Page... I know there's a lot of criticisms because he fought himself in Karate Man. That was Impact's attempt to do a theatric match. Impact, not necessarily the place to do that because Impact's just goofy. Impact for goofiness is great. But when it gets like to like serious wrestling matches against yourself, it does kind of get weird. But again, all ego Ethan Page is so great. I want to see him again one day at Bucky's. That would be so cool. Say, like Bucky Soho. 
the Bucky Soho tells me that Ruby Riot's her other cousin. I'm going to say, F you, Bucky Soho. You're Bucky Soho forever. You're going to be put on the Boo Selena Villa list. For life. So yeah, she says that, that that's a cousin. Like, Stop lying to me. Dumb, short-haired, tattooed bitch. Flat-chested woman. So yeah, she would very quickly... See, I could not do this. A week ago. Like, it would... I'd be like... Uh, uh, now I can freely do this. And point to you, Ruby Soho. Don't lie to people. Just be honest. And realize that, yeah, we've watched you. Uh, Dan Lambert mocks Orange Cassidy as well. The all ego stomps. And that backbreaker is so good. Um, the ego's edge. It's just like a razor's edge. That was so good. But then Orange Cassidy kicked out of that. I'm really getting tired of seeing all these big high-impact moves that I remember as a pro wrestler being used as like uh, throwaway stuff. Like, this isn't a video game. This isn't a video game. And, like, unless your name's, like, Brock Lesnar, Goldberg, Roman Reigns, Brian Cage, it should just take one finisher. Especially for Orange Cast. If, if, if you weigh 140 pounds, one signature should, should be the end of you. Not even a finisher. Uh, let's see here. Um, Ethan Page. Again, those... those Powerful chops. Orange Cassidy eventually hits the orange puns. Hits the orange mist. And then like a body slam. Like that's all it was. And. Yeah, Orange Cassidy won. A ham sandwich match. Kind of disappointing. Then we have the interview with uh, Christian and Evil Luchasaurus. Because then it was Evil Luchasaurus versus Serpentico. Yeah, this was just a squash. I didn't even pay attention to this. I think I was eating, I think I was getting dinner ready. Um, it, it was a, a snare trap with a nerf hold to end it. Luchasaurus wins. Uh, it's good that we're seeing Evil Luchasaurus, I guess. I don't want to give it a can of soup because it was just a pure squash match. It was a ham sandwich match. The only reason why it's a ham sandwich match is because at least they're reintroducing the Luchasaurus character. So I can deal with that. Uh, a little bit about Scorpio Sky and Wardlow. Uh, backstage. And the next match it was... Max Caster and, 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 and the Gun Boys. Oh, Max Caster should be allowed to rap every show. Like, I don't care what they say. Versus Dan Housen and FTR. Uh, Dax Classic Star is so good. FTR versus the Gun Boys. That's a match I could watch for a while. That like The Gun Boys, they're developing. Again, they have Billy Gunn to really coach him up. Um, be their talent advisor. He could show him so much fun stuff. FCR is just so good. Um, and then, like, separately, you could do Max Caster versus Dan Housen. That would actually kind of be funny. Dax, again, uses moves. The Atomic Drop. Love that. Uh, Dan Housen, though, he tags in. He just gets his world rocked. He's just there to, to, to get beat up, I think, most of the time. Uh, Colin tells FCR. Suck it. Suck it! I like that. Flashing back to their dad. Um, Caster. The, the chin lock. Uh, Cash gets the hot tag. FTR versus the gun boys. Stereo moves was so good. Then uh, Max Caster's partner. Uh, the other guy from uh, Lucha Underground. Missed a crush shot. He's not hurt anymore. Oh. That's not good. Dan Housen and FTR win. This was a... F again, FTR is so good. The Gun Boys are, are, are so 
fun to watch. Max Cat. The thing is, and I think it's been said before, Max Caster's promo ability is up here. His wrestling ability is, is here. Now, the reason why he pairs so well with the Gun Boys, Gun Boys' promo ability, yeah, they're okay. Their wrestling is really good. So, again, with them, it, everything balanced out. It was really good. This was a cheeseburger match. Then we get um, Jay Lethal and Sanjay Dutt with uh, what's his face there. The promo Jade Cargill taking on Leela Gray. Leela Gray, I mean, for the most part, got caught in a fallaway slam. She had like one or two knees. Who cares? Jade, the pump handle, whatever she calls it, the jaded. Um, oh, we did see a little bit though. Of Jade Cargill, because you could always tell when when the women are lying down on the ground, they're like pulling something up. When whenever they have to adjust themselves, and and, and you can see this little little see it like this. Yes, yeah, so we all know what that is, folks. It wasn't as pronounced. I don't think it was that pronounced. It was. It's it's just her dark skin. With, with a darker, smaller circle, too. wasn't that big. It, like, like, if it wasn't for the mods, like, freeze, freeze framing it and actually making it bigger, that was, like, it would be hard to tell. But, yeah, you would tell something slipped out there. Thank you very much, Jade Cargill. Um, yeah, whatever. I, I'm just over Jade Cargill. The host champion. Uh, can of soup match. Then the baddies come in. They just stomp everyone. Then the young boys have a promo. Then we get to war games. No, blood and guts. No, it's war games. A spirit. It's just war games with a close. It's like, it's not like war games. Because war games has an open top. It's, it's like Hell in a Cell meets war games. That's all. Um, it's the Jericho Appreciation Society versus the Blackpool Combat Club. Claudio Castanogi. Cesaro and Sammy Sammy Guevara start off. Um, so happy it wasn't Johnny Gargano, but yeah, that's okay. And um, they start off. It's a botch start. They can't make it because they both start off the op op opposite rings. They can't. They can't figure out how to get into the the middle no man's area. So yeah. Um, uh, Sammy got a pop up, R ate a pop up RKO. That was great. Then Daniel Garcia is the next. Uh, Claudia gets gets beat up again. Now you're going two on one. Uh, Will Yuta comes in. He suplexes everyone. Now it's two on two. Jake Hagar is next. It's Jake Hagar and Claudio Castronevich. So that was really good to see. Again, we the people. It's good to see that reunion. Uh, Moxley then gets in. Brings in a chair into the ring because he's Moxley. Uh, then he goes to all of Duel the Butcher. He must have had like a fork or something in his jacket. He brings out a fork and starts carving up uh, the one guy, Daniel Garcia's forehead. His forehead's too smooth. You have to get that thing butted up a little bit, baby. Um, yeah, the Black Blue Comeback Club. They do the heart attack in the heart foundation move. The trap, 12 six elbows to everyone. Uh, the other guy gets in the ring, just kind of like hides. Ortiz gets in next and goes bonkers. He's supposed to fight someone. Moxie pulls out broken glass. No thumbtacks yet. Broken glass is probably worse. Even if it's like sugar glass. Broken glass is probably worse. Because that will cut. That will just slice and lacerate. At least thumbtacks will puncture and it'll kind of stay there. So it'll like ooze a little bit, but it kind of... The good thing about thumbtacks, and there's no way in hell I'm demonstrating this for, for, for you wackos out there, 
They push a thumbtack in you. I know, because a friend of mine stapled his finger once. That was funny. You push it in, and the thing is, there's no hole for the blood to seep out, so it kind of like just oozes a little bit. And they're probably gimmicks, so they're not like super thumbtacks. I'll say, let's see. See, I couldn't do this either. See, this is your normal size thumbtack. Like that would go literally through like a finger. I think like the gimmick ones, first of all, they don't have that sharp, they don't have that sharp freaking point on them. And they're probably cut to like half the size. So again, it would be annoying to do. And then no, I'm not going to do this, but yeah. Like that, that would still freaking hurt. I mean, that could, this could damage something. I mean, if, if you did this through a finger, I mean, that's almost, ugh. I don't even want to imagine that. But yeah, they have to be given to a little bit. Or you really better not put your hands in that. Glass just has, like, edges. So again, if you poke this, unless it's through, I don't use my finger. But yeah, see, it, it's, it's, it's stuck there. It's not going to move. Well, I can do this. This is safer. Stuck there. It's not really going to move. But yeah, it will come out and it's, but by the time it does, the blood kind of begins to coagulate. Oh, that feels so good. To, to be able to stretch my arm like that. You don't realize what it's like. It, it sucks getting old. But yeah, like glass will just slice. Even if it's sugar glass, it's still going to slice. Thumbtacks will puncture, but they have them gimmicked. And they're only going to go, and they're not going to be like, like that. I mean, again, if you get a thumbtack like right there, oh, I can't even imagine the pain because that goes right into the knuckle. Synovial fluid just, ooh. I mean, on the back, you, you never see people bleeding profusely from thumbtacks. It's like a very slow drip of blood. Over time, it looks horrific. Well, actually, over time, it doesn't look as bad because by the time then, it's all clotted up. So, yeah. B glass. Slice. 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 Chunks. See, I don't know if that was some glass. I don't know what I did to that thumb. Yeah, just slice. Just never good. Um... Moxley's going all new, Jack. I'm surprised he didn't bring out a, a pizza cutter wheel. Only thing that match was missing, I guess. Um, Santana <laughs> had a barbed wire baseball bat and a table. You just can't bring in one or the other. You have to bring in both. Jericho then brings in a baseball bat. Kingston just beats up everyone. He doesn't care. Um, he has a kendo stick. Taz and Regal. Taz, listen, Taz and William Regal are the best. They feed off each other so well. They probably know each other so well where they can feed off each other. Even when they banter back and forth, it's, it elevates the match. JR is, I hate to say it, I think he's kind of getting over this stuff. Um, Excalibur is just oh, uh, the, the man in the mask. That's all that has to be said. Uh, there was a Doomsday device, and that was fun. And of course, Ty Conti gets involved. She passes in rubbing alcohol, which is going to sting. But I think it was in NXT where they said, yeah, the rubbing alcohol made him pass out. No, that's chloroform. Rubbing alcohol, it's not going to make you pass out. It's going to sting like anything, though. And then they said, oh, it's a bottle of water they're trying to pass. You know, that's, I smell rubbing alcohol. You know, it's probably like so diluted. But yeah. <laughs> then there was a sign, Claudio has sausage chips. God, these people are bonkers. At the end, Claudio makes the one guy tap out. Kingston's upset because he had Jericho in the lock. Wasn't because Jericho tapped out, it's because Garcia tapped out. I'll tell you what, I just had to see that glass and I would have like said, screw this shit. 
I don't care if it's sugar glass. Moxley has a freaking running around with a fork. Oh, yeah, then he did those, like, aerator things, too, to the head. That's not natural. That stuff... It's meant to aerate soil, not aerate one's forehead. And I don't care. There's, there's only some... And I know the skull is one of the hardest and densest bones in the body for obvious reasons to protect what's in there. But you start, like, trying to puncture things of the skull, eventually, I mean, I could see, like, it going... Just hitting a fontanelle, which is actually because the skull technically is a fixed joint. You have little fontanelles that allow, because your your head's the biggest part, and it has to squeeze a little bit to get out of the birth canal. There's some biology for you folks. And it allows the skull to grow because it's not completely formed. The brain's completely formed for the most part. The brain's actually bigger than the skull. They're like soft spots. Like a baby's head, you can, for a newborn, you can kind of feel it. It's like, you're not supposed to, but yeah, if you run, you're, if you run like your whole, like, like there are the soft spots, and then eventually when you get old and, and start losing hair, like all the plates fuse together, and it's a fixed joint. But yeah, it only takes, there's so little room for error when you're trying to impale someone in the head with something. Again, it goes, something hits that brain, and something turns off. And that's not fixable. Because that is the one thing with neurosurgery. They actually keep you awake. They deaden the skin, take the skin off, remove the skull cap, and remove a section of it. And, and then they ask you questions while they're doing brain surgery on you to make sure they're not cutting the wrong thing. Like They'll say simple things like, okay, can you move your, move your left pinky? So they say move, if they say move your left pinky, again, it's so good to do this. You move your left pinky. However, they say move your left pinky, and you start twitching your nose, they know they did something wrong. So, yeah. Um, War Games! It was good. You didn't have to bring in so much junk. I understand the tables and chairs. Moxie with a fork. Okay. Everything else, though, there, there should have been blood in it. I understand that. Ty should have got bloody again. Ty Conti bloody is just hot. It's weird. But yeah, whatever. You know what? It was a fun enough match. It was a cheeseburger match. Seriously, let me write this down. It's crushing you off. Let's take a little break. Um, actually, overall, AW. Again, War Games was long, too. So let's take a little break, break, break. And let's talk about the, the other non- WWE show. Impact Wrestle. Wow. This is short. This is good. I like short stuff. Um, bad ideas. <laughs> Impact is bad ideas. <laughs> Listen, bad ideas are the best ideas for Impact Wrestling. I mainly with PCO, it's like, yeah, we want to see you prove yourself. Because there was honor no more, and they're saying, hey, listen, PCO, you lost at the one show. We have to see that you actually mean mean this here. Um, then it was a little thing between, oh, then it was, wow, we had a quick little four-way match between Chris Bay, Steve Macklin, Trey Miguel, and Laredo Kid. And to be honest, everyone just was flying. Um, Bay... He just, he pulled out a few amazing moves. This is what you expect. I think I was actually cooking dinner at this time. So I do apologize for not getting all of it in. It was just so fun to watch, though. It was literally dive fest. Move, dive, move, dive, move, dive. Oh, dive to everyone. You know, I'm going to dive from the top rope. 
Uh, Trey eventually hit the Meteora. Trey Miguel wins, as you kind of expect. I'll tell you what. When they start just flying and not caring about themselves, mainly because it's Impact Wrestling, it, it jives with Impact Wrestling. It's not necessarily indie-style wrestling. It's not WWE-style wrestling, and it's not AEW, New Japan-style wrestling. New Japan, I always worry because they do so many moves that land on like the back of the neck. Like, I'm like, part of me says, this is so cool. And then part of me says, someone's going to die. So, yeah. And it's always appropriate for any show to wear a Macho Man shirt anyway. I think they're all in the laundry or, you know, I have to do my laundry tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, someone is back then. Oh, that's right. Raven. Quote the Raven. I can do this. Oh, wow, that harm is actually higher than the other one. I can do this again. I could not do this literally a week ago. Raven. An all-metal mayhem match or whatever. Or it's clockwork metal match, whatever it's called. But that's so good to see Raven back. He got so old. Whoa. Anyway, Gazelle Shaw versus Rosemary. Um, I'll tell you what. Gazelle Shaw came out. She said she's a transgender woman. Man, I'll tell you what, she is one of the best surgeons ever. I was convinced everything about her was all natural. Um, her voice sounds like a woman's voice. Her, her, her boobas look like woman's boobas. Nice woman's boobas. Great surgeon again. Nothing looked out of place or, or round down there. And there's still... That might be Friday night. That might be Saturday fireworks. But yeah. That's the baseball grounds. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I was impressed. Um, Rosemary. Again, she's just Rosemary. Rosemary bit Gazelle Shaw. That's what Rosemary does. Rosemary's all natural. Except for I think she has a couple of metal things. Yeah. I, I saw those, I think. I think once they kind of slipped out, and I'm like, what is that metal ring doing? The oh, yeah, uh, Rosemary. Sent head first into the corner. Gazelle's Shaw. It's too sweet. I don't even know why I put that. I just know she said it's too sweet to someone. She wants to join the Bullet Club. Then the influence gets involved. Yeah, Rosemary wins. I, th I think it was a DQ match because I have a question mark after and I'm like, really? Oh, I know why I have a question mark. Probably because the stream was cutting in and out too. I think Rosemary won. That would make sense if the influence got involved. I'll say it was a cheeseburger match. Yeah, because I can't use my beer bottle matches. For this. I just realized that. Um, then there was Mickey James and Chel uh, Mickey James doing an interview. Chelsea Green's there. And then Deanna Parazzo shows up. Deanna Parazzo says, Mickey James, Mick Aldis, congratulations, sir. <laughs> you made it way above your status. Um, again, Zack Ryder. Congratulations, sir. You made it way above. And I have Chelsea Green's autograph up there, too. I do have to figure that out one day. And Diana Parazzo. Hey, Diana. I'm single, okay? But yeah. Oh, that was kind of fun. Gail Kim comes out, like, announces nice stuff. Rosemary and Taya is so great. Where's Havoc? <laughs> they suck with James Mitchell. And James Mitchell says, yeah, I'm not doing a threesome with you two. <laughs> oh, for all my dirty mockery. Yeah, I, I wanted a, I wanted a, a succumbus and a vampire at the same time just to see what happened. And you two spoiled this. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> the reverend, the demon deacon James Mitchell is so good. Uh, 
Thank you for coming back. Then it was Samantha Evans versus Jordan Grace. I want to say Jordan Grace won. I think my feed cut out. And that was the end of that. So, I, I, I don't think those two could put on a great match. I'll say it's a ham sandwich match. Uh, there was a Josh Alexander interview. Then it was Bullet Club. For life. I think the members here were Chris Bay and Ace Austin. The newest member of Bullet Club. Again, because he's just, because Ace Austin is just too sweet. I do like the fact that he still does the magic trick for the staff. That's pretty cool. There's this PCO and Vincent. Um, Vincent gets sent to the turnbuckle. Um, good bullying a little bit by Honor No More on ringside. Um, and, oh, this was just a smosh, yeah. Eventually, Honor No More come in and beat up everyone. Uh, Bull, the rest of Bullet Club shows up. The good brothers show up. They're too sweet, and they're also for life. Although it's like, because <clears throat> he's a machine gunner, Carl Anderson. So yeah, then then Gallus beats up everyone. Vincent misses. He oh he actually got pinned. So they were fighting on the outside. Vincent gets pinned on a roll up attempt. That was really it. And then just. The, the beating continues. So yeah, this was fun. This is a ham sandwich match. Oh, then Heath Slater shows up. That's always good to see. Then it's celebration time. Maybe it was the Good Brothers. Yeah, because it's Ace Austin versus Alex Zane. This is actually pretty fun. Ace, again, definitely bring the heel tactics. The too sweet. The stomps. Uh, Zane, the slingshot, Hurricane. That was great. The Baja Blast was fun. Why are all these moves named after Mountain Dew sodas? That's weird. Um, Ace Austin hit the modified Miz clothesline where he does that into the ropes. Um, Ace Austin is so good. So quick. Zane also. Quick to the both. Ace Austin wins by a cheap shot. Ace Austin wins. He retains his, his, I think, is he a title holder? I forget. I forget if he won the Super Juniors. Oh, no, no, no. He's the X Division holder, I think. Yeah. This was a good match. Cheeseburger match. Then in a weird, like, face versus face match. Again, I think this goes back to the pay-per-view. It was Chris Saban and Frankie Kazarian. Uh, Chris Saban versus Frankie Kazarian. Classic wrestling match. Um, Kaz is so good. That fisherman suplex was fun. Uh, Chris Saban sweep, swept onto the apron. Shelly's at ringside. He just there cheering him on. Chris Saban has a DDT on the outside. They kind of go back and forth a lot. Uh... Chris Saban hits his finisher, whatever it's called. There was a kick out. Kaz did the elbow drop. That was so fun. The German suplex. Then hit the elbow drop. Chris Saban eventually wins. I'll tell you what. This is a good face versus face mask. Saban hit whatever finisher is a switch kill. or It's not kill switch. So, I, don't, so I, don't, I forget what it is. Like, it has nothing to do with being a motor city machine gun or something like that. It's just a weird name. So, yeah. That was fun, though. That was a good match. Cheeseburger match. So, that's it for an entire week of pro wrestling. So, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to stick to this format. Put it up on the weekends. So this will be going up Sunday. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Because Friday will be that. Now next week's going to be weird though. 
Next week. I'll probably have videos up by Wednesday and Thursday. Because Wednesday's videos are going to be the traditional WWE videos. Uh, the review of Raw and NXT. Actually, I'm only doing one. Wednesday, I'm doing AEW. Only. Because Impact, I got a date again. She's so hot. I'll show you the pictures later. Or the pictures I can show. Yeah. Not the pictures I... In my private collection. Indeed. But yeah, um... So Thursday I won't be doing Impact Wrestling. I'd rather spend time with her and watch wrestling. Because... It's Impact Wrestling. Whatever. Um, Friday! I'm going to be working, and I'm also going to Friday Night Smackdown Live. So that means I'm going to be doing an entirely separate video just for Smackdown. I'll show you, hopefully, a little behind, behind, behind the scenes action. Last time I went to a Smackdown, or was it Raw? In Orlando. Uh, Renee Young was there. She had a wardrobe malfunction. Like, I, I, I was sitting behind the announce table. I heard, whoops! She covered up something. Like, she was like, whoops! And they had to pin something to her back. So, yeah. Something fell out there. It's always a good sign. So, you never know what happens at SmackDown. Again, they have bonus matches, the dark matches, uh, main event. Two main event matches. The one other event. One kind of dark, final dark show. Um, Saturday, there's no wrestling. And then Sunday, it's going to be another live show. Sunday, WWE comes back to Daytona Beach for Daytona Beach Live. So, yeah. And then I'll figure out next week's schedule. Because I know Ring of Honor is on the 23rd. Do a quick prediction video about that. WrestleMania is the 30th. Or SummerSlam is the 30th. That's weird. I have to get used to... I have to get used to this for some time. Other than that, the thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Bye. I don't know. I have to stop capture first. Start it.